At Sassol, we believe all injuries are preventable. As a milestone on our journey to zero harm, we must intensify our focus to eliminate fatalities and high severity injuries. In 2013, an evaporator similar to this one, a blockage occurred in the discharge line during water jetting activities in the sump. This caused the water to accumulate. The work was stopped and production management ordered the water to be pumped out. Once the water was pumped out, the blockage was cleared using low pressure water. The team continued with the work, monitoring the drain point for another blockage. As a team leader, it is important to identify any challenges that may be affecting a team member's state of mind. That may have unintended consequences on the team's safety performance. At the beginning of each shift, it is imperative that as a team we review the list of low and high risk tasks that we will be performing for the day and associated critical controls. By focusing on four key areas, we will ensure that our people return home safely every day. Pre-task risk assessments and identification and verification of critical controls. Life-saving rules. Understanding what influences our behavior towards safety. Developing and embedding learnings from incidents. In 2018, the evaporator was again shut down for plant maintenance and high pressure water jetting activities with similar risks of blockages and water buildup occurring. The risks of potential blockage and water buildup were not identified in the pre-task risk assessment, even though a similar blockage had happened before in 2013. On the final day of cleaning, with 55 block tubes remaining, management instructed the cleaning team to continue cleaning the tubes on day shift and that night shift should clean the sump area. As night shift was cleaning the sump as planned, the team had to stop work due to water mist build up inside the vessel that reduced visibility. The team members did not identify that the mist build up was an indication of a possible blockage. The shift continued to work. Large pieces of scale were removed from the walls, falling into the cone leading to the discharge line. The pre toss risk assessment was completed and communicated to the guys on site. At the end of the night shift, the permit to work was signed off and the shift handover document was completed. The site manager returned to site from the morning meeting. He instructed the team not to continue cleaning the sump, but instead to continue with water jetting activities. Unplanned changes were made to priorities and timelines during the course of the work, strictly adhered to procedure prescribed for the task. At this stage, the permit to work was signed off and the shift handover document was completed. We didn't clean the sump up as decided in the meeting. We continued to unblock the blocked tubes. We took the hoses from the sump and went back to the top manhole to continue unblocking and polishing. We unblocked seven tubes. Night shift should carry on where we ended to unblock the blocked tubes as production wanted to see the progress of Thursday day shift and night shift. A change in plan caused the team to leave their normal work sequence, which contributed to a blockage in the discharge line by not cleaning the sump and discharge line as planned. The supervisor told the team to start with routine housekeeping before entering the vessel to continue with water jetting. Housekeeping involved cleaning the drum and the area around the manual and loading the scale into bags for safe disposal. Always obtain a relevant permit to work authorization before beginning a task that requires a permit. Part of the team went to the top of the evaporator to conduct nozzle inspections. The crew started cleaning the area around the manhole, loading the scale into bags. Only a small amount of water was trickling from the manhole. The team looked inside the manhole with a torch and noticed a lot of scale inside the discharge line. The manhole barricade was not installed. Always obtain a valid permit to work before entering a confined space. The team continued cleaning the discharge line using a shovel scraping the scale closer to the manual so it can be removed by hand. The operators failed to identify the hazard of potential water buildup behind the blockage and the discharge line. As scale was removed from the discharge line, the large mass of scale moved downward towards the operator cleaning the line. When almost four of these jumps were filled, a loud noise was heard coming from the manual, followed by a huge volume of water and scale gushing onto the team working there. The team was displaced by 13 tons of water and scale gushing out of the manhole as the blockage was removed. The force of the suddenly released water pinned the employee's legs between the concrete pillar and the full scale drum. The force of the water flattened the drum onto his legs. The employee sustained fractures to both femurs. Due to complications in hospital, his right leg and foot had to be amputated. 
This incident was very traumatizing for everybody involved. A change in conditions needs a change in requirements. Reassess the situation when the plan has been changed. By learning from previous incidents, we will be successful in eliminating fatalities and reducing high severity injuries. To prevent high severity incidents in future, key learnings should be shared, discussed and implemented. Routine and specialized work must have formalized procedures that are informed by detailed task risk assessments. Activities done after safe making, such as cleaning activities, can introduce additional hazards that need to be evaluated using continuous risk assessment processes. The work must be stopped and the continuous risk assessment re-evaluated when the conditions change. Supervisors must ensure safe task execution at all times. Identifying hazards on a task risk assessment does not mean that the team is familiar with all the hazards. When unblocking process lines and equipment, stored energy introduced before and during task execution should be considered. Permit to work roles should be fully understood by all relevant role players and executed accordingly.